Hey guys, it's Danny. Today we're talking about mealybugs. Yes, I have a few issues with my orchids and mealybugs this year, unlike any other year. And I had to take some action on it, which I would like to share with you today, tell you the treatments that I tried and that worked for me, why these pests occurred in the first place this year, some details of course about mealybugs, where you can find them most and how you can treat the orchid without having much damage. The bad news is mealybugs prefer flowers and flowers are some of the most sensitive parts of the orchid. The good news is mealybugs are also easy to eradicate and there is a way in which you can actually save the flowers as well. So I will take you through that today, but also I'll give you many, many other details related to these bugs. For those of you who are in a hurry and are interested in the quick fix, but not all of the other important, in my opinion, details, here you go. This is a timestamp. You can skip to this part of the video. However, all of the video, in my opinion, is important. I do address some warnings as well. So if you find yourself having questions or problems, do rewatch the entire video. So that said, let's take a look at these pests, tell you how they appeared in my life and where you can find them on orchids. So at a first glance, you might not even spot them, but if you take a very, 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 very close look, do you see what I'm seeing? Right there on the column, you can see a lot of fuzzy creatures. Those are the mealybugs and they like to chew on fresh and tender growth. Orchids generally have a protective layer on their leaves called a cuticle. So mealybugs are not necessarily fans of older leaves or mature leaves. They are fans of tender new growth such as flowers, flower spikes and fresh leaves or fresh new growths. Therefore, most of the times you will find them in these places. If the orchid has flowers, most of the times you'll find them on the flowers. But as I was saying, tender growth is what they prefer. So flower spikes and little flower stems are also on the menu. And you can see here, you can actually see one moving there, a whole family of them, if I can call them like that, just congregating on the flower spike and the flowers. If I look at the orchid in its entirety, I really don't see much activity on the leaves, but definitely on the flowers and the flower spike, things are not looking great. How do mealybugs occur in a collection? Well, it's easy. Just like any other pest, they are present in nurseries, they're present outside, they're present everywhere. Orchids are not the only thing they like. Most other plants are on the menu as well. I have a ton of affected plants on my terrace right now. So just like spider mites and thrips and other pests, they exist in the world, it is a reality. And sometimes they can get on our orchids, through the window, through other new orchids, on your clothes, with the wind. There are a million ways in which they can enter your collection. They can also be brought in by other insects that have a symbiosis relationship with them. And these other insects are ants. I doubt all ant species are gonna bring in mealybugs. So I'll research a little bit on the internet, share with you some articles down below in the description. Do feel free to research it on your own. In the ants' defense though, this is the first year they do this. And I really suspect it's only because I have an explosion of pests on my terrace and everywhere around. Because this year has been incredibly warm, very, very dry, rains were late, low temperatures were late, and outside there is an explosion of everything, not only mealybugs, thrips, white flies, everything right now. And I do have issues with thrips as well. We're gonna address it in a different video because I'm still treating it. So I'm drawing the conclusion that if there aren't mealybugs around, then the ants will not bring them, find them somewhere and bring them. But if they're around, they might bring them or the mealybugs are already on the plants and the ants are just congregating around them, trying to benefit from them, trying to protect them. And as I was saying, it is the first all of the previous years. I have not had one single mealybug on my orchids. This year, all of the plants in the garden and in the neighbor's garden have mealybugs, so it might just be a coincidence. However, just so you guys know, ants and mealybugs do seem to have a symbiosis relationship, which might happen in some years and it might not happen in other years, but indeed, they are buddies. And that's not fun. Luckily though, mealybugs are not the worst bug you can have on your orchid. They're fairly easy to treat. And I have been told by many of my viewers that my recipe for spider mites actually works pretty great. 
I'll link it to you down below in the description. I'm not gonna insist on spider mites. I had a lot of spider mites this year as well, but I kept it very well under control. The problem with that solution is that it contains oil, which if used in the correct dosage is absolutely harmless to the leaves, even new growths. But when it comes to the flowers, you can absolutely spot them and destroy them because they're not protected by that cuticle. And since that recipe works on contact, you do have to spray very, very well the flower, pretty much compromising the flower. And not only that, but the buds as well. So yes, that recipe works out pretty, pretty great. It might need multiple applications because these bugs are bigger than the spider mite. So you will need to address it more frequently. But when it comes to the flowers and the buds, it really isn't the greatest solution. Fear not though, I do have a solution that will not damage the flowers and it will get you rid of millibugs. And that solution is isopropyl alcohol. Some of you will rejoice because this particular alcohol is found abundantly in countries such as the USA and Canada and I'm sure other countries in the world as well. It is usually called rubbing alcohol. However, in many countries around Europe specifically, we don't find isopropyl alcohol, we find ethyl alcohol, which is used in the exact same way. Now, there are quite a few differences between ethyl alcohol and isopropyl alcohol. I will share with you in the description down below an article about it. In some countries, ethyl is more widely used because it is actually safer for humans, but at the same time, it is much more drying than isopropyl alcohol. Isopropyl, even though it does the same thing, it disinfects, it is toxic if ingested, but it's not as drying as ethyl alcohol. So I think you can see where I'm getting here because this is not as drying, it is actually safer to use on orchids and on flowers. And here is an example. This is a Moltoniopsis that I sprayed for uh, spider mites and also thrips. I'm still in the process of developing solutions for those, but what I used was a combination of my recipe together with some alcohol, but ethyl alcohol. And since I had issues on the flowers as well, I sprayed a little bit this flower, which at the time was open, everything else was not open. And as you can see, the flower really doesn't look that good. I do have some spots due to the oil, but all of this edging on the petals this is dehydration and this is caused by the alcohol in my solution. However, the flowers on both of these orchids have been sprayed with isopropyl alcohol and nothing, absolutely nothing happened to them. I did this about three weeks ago, but as you can see, the mealybugs have returned because this is not a systemic solution, it is a contact solution meaning it will solve the issue for the time being, but it will not solve it forever. So you need to find the source of your issues. And since this is the time where the timestamp will tell you to skip to, isopropyl alcohol will be the solution. I will mix it in 20% concentration in water and I will spray the flowers and the flower spikes and wherever I find mealybugs. A little warning here, whenever you do treatments, whether you follow me or anybody else on the internet, or kid experts, societies, whatever it is, always, always treat one flower, one leaf, one orchid, and see how your orchid reacts before treating the entirety of your collection. Even though the treatments might be good, there are many, many variables between us, starting with what type of orchid you have, which might be more sensitive than what I use the treatment on, and ending with maybe you are going to get the ratio a little bit wrong, maybe the products you find available are not the same concentration as me, and a million other reasons why something will not perform the same for you. And until you figure it out, the best thing to do is to start off with only one flower or one leaf or one orchid, give it a few days, see how your orchid reacts, and if everything goes okay, then you can start treating the entirety of the orchid or multiple orchids in your collection. So with that said, let's get to work. So I will prepare 200 milliliters of solution. I have 200 milliliters of water here, which I will pour in a spray bottle. 20% out of 200 milliliters is 40 milliliters. So I will use some grated spoons and add 40 milliliters of isopropyl alcohol. And compared to the smell of ethyl alcohol, isopropyl is a lot stronger and not so pleasant. Also, when you pour it into the bottle, you will notice the water warm up slightly. That is normal. It's not gonna get very, very warm. I'll give it a little bit of a shake to mix everything and I'm ready to spray. A little side note, 
You will see some people on the internet use bigger concentrations than this. I've even seen some of them prepare a 50-50 solution. Which on the leaves might be safe, it might be okay. Some of them even use isopropyl alcohol directly on the orchid. And again, on the leaves it might be okay for the orchids with very thick leaves. But I intend to use the solution on buds and flowers. And I prefer to keep it safe. 20% is enough to take care of my buds. And I hope that for the vast majority of my orchids, it's not strong enough to damage the buds and the flowers. So luckily I did this before, and I know that on those flowers, nothing bad will happen, but I will use the solution on the buds of my Brassavola, which is slightly nerve wracking, but I have to. So I went outside and sprayed the entirety of the flower spike and the flowers on the front side and the back side very liberally until the solution was dripping from the plant. I also sprayed my Brassavola, which has buds, and that should be okay for today. I do intend to repeat the treatment tomorrow and spray again the flowers and the entire flower spike. Since I don't have mealybugs on the foliage, I'm not gonna spray the foliage, but I will keep a close eye on it. And maybe I will spray with my mineral oil solution. I'm also going to quarantine this orchid. I'm not gonna place it next to other orchids because mealybugs do travel. You saw the move. But I do want to enjoy the flowers, hence why I did the treatment on the flowers. I've seen growers just cut away the flower spike when they see a heavy mealybug infestation. And that's just sad. We're waiting an entire year sometimes or even more to see flowers. And because of a few bugs, we're just gonna cut it away? No. Now, the treatment is necessary because if you leave the mealybugs be, they will actually make the buds or flowers fall faster. Now, after the treatment, of course, I can go with a Q-tip and just remove where I see very, very big colonies. And because I sprayed with alcohol, all of these guys are already gone. They're very, very easy to remove. And I'm not gonna show you the details, but you can imagine, you can actually go ahead and remove them with a cotton swab or a little paper. If you want to remove the big colonies and make the flowers a little more appealing, you can do so. If you don't wanna do that, don't, you can let it be. But I would advise to spray again, just to make sure that we got all of the bugs. Also make sure the orchid is placed in a well-ventilated area because water droplets on the flowers can cause botrytis if they don't dry out fast. So after 10 minutes, try to remove the excess or make sure the orchid is placed in a well-ventilated area. And speaking about this, I also made a little experiment on my Miltoniopsis. I treated one of the flowers with the isopropyl solution and I did the exact same solution with the ethyl alcohol. I sprayed a different flower and here are the results. So I sprayed this orchid about 10 minutes ago and full effects will appear a little later, but I can already see a difference. This is the flower that I sprayed with isopropyl. And as you can see, it still looks pretty, pretty okay. And this, is the flower that I sprayed with ethyl alcohol. And can we see some browning already starting to show? This is because that type of alcohol is a lot more drying and some flowers are just more sensitive. There are also other methods to treat mealybugs. If you're okay with insecticides, most insecticides will take care of them. You don't need something special necessarily. And you can also use vegetable oils, the most popular one being neem oil. Now, a few things about neem oil. First of all, it smells so, so, so bad. I just opened the cap a little bit and my entire grow space smells so bad right now. I cannot handle it. It smells like garlic or onion. And if you're not okay with those smells, you're not gonna be okay with this one as well. But some people do have a lot of success with it. And for some plants, this is a better solution, theoretically at least, than my mineral oil solution. A note here though, there are two types of neem oil on the market. What you want is the cold pressed, organic, 100% pure neem oil, because this type of oil contains the active ingredient, which fights off insects. There is another type of oil, which is an extract of this, which can be easier to use, but apparently it lacks the active ingredient. So again, it's a smothering agent. It doesn't contain an active ingredient. And if I were to choose between vegetable oil and mineral oil, I would choose mineral oil any day of the week. And you'll have a video down below in the description with an experiment seeing the results with the two oils. Mineral oil is much, much lighter than any type of vegetable oil. So if you're only going to use it as a smothering agent on contact, definitely forget about neem, use mineral oil. 
but the pure organic neem oil supposedly has an active ingredient which is systemic, meaning it will make the plant not appealing for insects. I'm not entirely sure about that. I just got myself neem oil to try it out because I have some plants on which mineral oil is definitely, definitely not advisable to use. And these are my African violets. Now the violets don't have that very, very thick cuticle that protects the leaf, so whatever spot the oil makes, it will create a blemish. And being that, if you want to use oils as a smothering agent, you have to make sure that the entirety of the leaf is covered, well, you can imagine the effects it will have. It will completely destroy the leaf system, and that's not okay. So I did research and I found out that neem oil doesn't necessarily need to be covering all of the parts of the leaf, you just need to cover enough for the plant to absorb some of that neem and become repellent for the pests. Again, this is not tested by me, just what I researched, so that's why I have the neem oil. But I thought it would be a good idea to tell you about the neem as well and to tell you about the two types of neem which you can find on the market. So that's about it for today. Do remember to check out the description for more information. I am so, so happy that my lovely friend sent me some isopropyl alcohol a little while back before the mealybug explosion started to happen. So I cannot think of a better timing because in my area, I cannot find isopropyl alcohol. And being that I'm seeing a major difference between isopropyl and ethyl, definitely I would use this one on orchids. I would not use the ethyl one on orchids. This is something that the American Orchid Society states as well in their articles, but this is the first time that I'm using isopropyl and definitely, definitely there is a difference. As for the mealybugs, you will see after you spray, when you try to remove them, you will notice they're not alive anymore. Again, I don't wanna go into the details, but it absolutely works. Alcohol always works on mealybugs. The problem is it can damage orchids as well. So again, let me remind you, always try it out on one flower or one leaf or one orchid before you go ahead and treat the entirety of your collection. So always play it safe. And with that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you found this useful. And you know the drill, like or dislike this video below. Subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos and African violets from time to time, tutorials, updates, and all of that fun stuff. And if you wish to support the channel, do consider visiting the merch store down below. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.